Greetings and namaskar to each one who came here to watch this video. In this video, we are going to start a new unit and that is mathematical tools of quantum mechanics. As we know that we use different language for different aspect and different region have different languages. We use language for learning, talking, chatting, texting, etc. So similarly, physics has also its language and that is mathematics. So here in this video, we are going to start a new series in which we will going to learn mathematical tools of quantum mechanics. Well, the first topic that comes is the Hilbert space. What is Hilbert space? A Hilbert space, which is also denoted by H. So a Hilbert space consists of a set of vectors like psi, phi, chi, etc. and a set of scalars like a, b, c, etc. which satisfy the following properties. So number one, H is linear space. So what is linear vector space? So a linear vector space consists of two sets of elements and two algebraic rules. So two sets of element consist of set of vectors and set of scalars. Vectors such as psi, phi, chi, etc. And scalars like a, b, c, all the constant and all. And if we talk about algebraic rules, so it follows addition rule and multiplication rule. Or we can say a rule of vector addition and a rule of scalar multiplication. Now understanding properties of these algebraic rules. Firstly, addition rule. The additional rule has the property and a structure of an abelian group. The first property is if psi and phi are the vectors of a space, their sum that is psi plus phi is also a vector of that same space. What does it say? If psi and phi are the vectors of a space, then if we add these two vectors, we will get a resultant vector. Suppose r. So that r will also belongs to this vector space. Now moving further, we all are familiar with all these types of properties. So it follows the law of commutative, which says psi plus phi is equals to phi plus psi. We are all aware of the commutative law that we can add vectors this way or this way. We will get the same result. They will be equal. Now comes law of associativity, which says psi plus phi in bracket plus chi is equals to psi plus bracket phi plus chi. So no matter whether we add these two vectors first or these two vectors first, we will get the same result. Now comes the existence of a zero or null vector or neutral vector. For each vector psi, there must exist a zero vector such that zero plus psi is equals to psi plus zero gives psi. So here we are getting the vector psi of the same magnitude. Now comes the existence of the symmetric or the inverse vector. Each vector psi must have a symmetric vector which is minus psi such that psi plus minus psi is equals to minus psi plus psi gives zero as they will cancel each other and we will get zero as a result. Now coming to the multiplication rule. So the multiplication of the vectors by scalars gives these properties. So number one, if psi and phi are the two vectors of the space, any linear combination a psi plus b phi is also a vector of the space, a and b being a scalar. So psi and phi are the two vectors and when we multiply them with these scalars and we'll add it, so their result will also be the vector of that space where psi and phi are the vectors a and b are the scalars. It also follows the distribution property with respect to addition. It says a bracket psi plus phi gives a psi plus a phi or a plus b bracket psi gives a psi plus b psi. Here we are adding vectors first and then multiplying it by the scalars. And in this case, we are adding scalars first and then multiplying them with the vectors. So here we are getting a linear combination and this is also a vector of that space. 
So this also lies in that factor space. Now coming to the associativity, it is with respect to the multiplication of the scalars. So here a bracket b psi is equals to a b bracket psi. No matter whether we add scalar with a vector first or we multiply scalars first, they will be equal to each other. Now moving further, for each vector there must exist a unitary scalar that is i and a zero scalar zero such that i psi is equals to psi i is equals to psi as it is a unitary scalar so it will not change the magnitude of the vector so we will get the vector with the same magnitude as a result now coming to the zero scalar if we multiply zero scalar with psi or psi with a zero scalar we will get zero so this is linear vector space which have two sets of elements and algebraic roots and it follows the two properties vector addition and scalar multiplication. So it was important to understand the linear vector space before understanding the Hilbert space. So here we have gone through the linear space. Now coming to the second point and that is the scalar product of psi and phi is equal to the complex conjugate of the scalar product of psi and phi. So here it is not like commutative like psi phi is equal to phi psi. It's not so like if we do the scalar product of psi and phi, we will get phi and psi. No, it's not so. Here it has different property where psi and phi is equal to their conjugate. This is a sign of conjugate. So the scalar product of psi with phi is equal to the complex conjugate of the scalar product phi and psi. Now moving further, the scalar product of psi with phi is linear with respect to the second factor. Now to understand this, let's suppose phi is equals to a phi 1 plus b phi 2. So now if we do its scalar product psi comma phi, we will get psi comma a phi 1 plus b phi 2 which gives a psi phi 1 plus b psi phi 2. So from here we get this that is psi comma a phi 1 plus b phi 2 and if we will operate them we will get this that is a psi phi 1 plus b psi phi 2. So the scalar product of phi with the psi is linear with the second factor that is this second factor is this. So it is linear with the second factor. Now the fourth point that is the scalar product of a vector psi with itself is a positive real number. Like if you operate psi with itself, like psi comma psi, it would be equal to its mod square, psi mod square. It would be always greater than or equals to zero. The only condition when it can be zero is when psi is zero. Otherwise it will be a positive real number. Now coming to the fifth point that is H is separable means there exists a Cauchy sequence psi n belongs to h where n is equals to 1, 2 or 3 such that for every psi n of h and epsilon greater than 0 there exists at least one psi n of the sequence for which psi minus psi n mod is less than epsilon and as you have gone through the Cauchy sequence in your UG classes so you must be aware of this concept now Sixth point that is H is complete. So every Cauchy sequence psi n belongs to H converges to an element of H. That is for any psi n the relation limit n m tends to infinity psi n minus psi m in mod is equals to zero. It simply means that the Hilbert space is complete. For example if we take real number line, if we take the numbers on the line like 1, 2, 3, all the rational numbers, so we can see that there is no gap between them. But if we take the irrational numbers, so we can see the gap between the number line between the two rational numbers. So that makes it incomplete and in case of rational number, it makes it complete. So similarly here, H is complete means it don't have any gap in between. So it follows this relation. So summing it up, we saw that Hilbert space consists of the set of factors and scalars and have the following properties like H is linear space, 
and the scalar product of the psi and phi gives the complex conjugate as a result and the scalar product of the psi and phi is linear with respect to the second factor then the scalar product of the vector psi with itself gives a positive real number then h is separable and h is complete so that's all thing defines the hilbert space so that's it bye bye side hope you found this video productive thanks for giving your time here take care